This week, Paul writes a letter to himself. There are plenty of good reasons not to skip the ads. And reading Paul 101. How do we understand this master of the run-on sentence? All those things coming up this week on Cultivate. Welcome, and just kind of by way of introduction, I want to set the stage and explain a little bit about what we're trying to do here. You might know that at, at Daybreak Church, we're getting ready to start a new study series on the book of Ephesians, and I'm really excited about getting into this study with you. But as as I was thinking about how we can study this word together, this lesson that Jesus shares about the way we receive the gospel kept going through my mind. He creates this image where he says, imagine a, a sower, a gardener, walking through their land, and they have in their hands these seeds, the, the gospel message, in other words, in their hands, and they're spreading it around on the soil. And some of these seeds fall on soil that's been prepared in advance, soil that has had the lumps all broken up and, and has been weeded and all the weeds have been taken out, and maybe soil that's already been watered and is all fertilized and ready to go. So when the seed falls... It's able to send down roots. It's able to send up a, a shoot. It's able to bear fruit in season. But Jesus says sometimes the seeds fall on soil that's not ready to receive them. Soil that's uh, choked up with weeds or covered in rocks or soil that's been packed down and is so hard hearted that it can't even receive any teaching at all. With that in mind, I thought, what a good opportunity for us to cultivate the soil of our hearts a little bit, to prepare our hearts for the lesson, for the study that we're going to be partaking in on Sunday. So with that in mind, I thought, let's let's get into God's Word here beginning on Monday. Let's start studying it now. Let's start cultivating the soil now and preparing ourselves now. Every week, we'll have a chance to just briefly get into some first thoughts here of our text in Ephesians. We'll read it together, I'll share some thoughts, and you can just start getting the soil ready to receive God's Word together on Sunday. With that in mind, let's read the scripture for this week, the very beginning of the book of Ephesians. I'll have it here on the screen so you can follow along. Let's read that together. Paul, an apostle of Jesus by God's will, to the faithful saints in Christ Jesus at Ephesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ for himself according to his favor and will to the praise of his glorious grace that he favored us with in the beloved. We have redemption in him through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he planned in him for the administration of the days of fulfillment to bring everything together in the Messiah, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. We have also received an inheritance in him, predestined according to the purposes of the one who works out everything in agreement with the decisions of his will, so that he who already put our hope in the Messiah might bring praise to his glory. When you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed in him, you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance for the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. It's the word of the Lord. I should mention, uh, it says here that it's a, uh, we're reading out of the New Living Translation. I believe this is actually the Holman Christian Translation. So just a quick word of edit there in case there's some confusion. But here we are. We're reading the book of Ephesians together. And I just have a couple quick thoughts to share. Uh, the first is the introduction, which if you're not really familiar with this kind of biblical literature might be a little bit off-putting. 
um, it almost appears that Paul is addressing this letter to himself. It's actually a little bit even more confusing than that. Some of the earliest manuscripts we have of this letter don't include uh, that second line. Here, I'll point to it here. They don't include that second line that you read there, to the faithful saints in Jesus Christ at Ephesus. Some of the earliest versions we have don't actually include that line. So it's a, it's, it might be even more confusing to you because here you have this first line, Paul, and you know our tradition, our kind of way of writing is that you address it to a person. So is Paul writing this letter to himself? No, the answer is uh, that it was kind of the tradition at that time to establish the author. You you put the author at the beginning of a letter. This is who it is from, not necessarily who it is to. So just an encouragement there as you're reading that, it's okay to be a little bit confused because it is a little bit of a different tradition, but Paul's not actually writing a letter to himself. This is who the letter is from. The interesting thing, again, being that this is one of the letters that Paul writes. It doesn't actually, in its, in its original sense, in the oldest manuscripts we have, it doesn't have a specific addressee. It doesn't have someone specific that it's written to. Most scholars at this point believe that this is a letter written to the church, including the church at Ephesus, but also including the church in Colchester. This is a letter that Paul wrote to the church, the church of Jesus. And so when we read this, we know that this is a letter addressed both to the church at Ephesus, but also to our church today. As we move on, this letter almost makes you breathless as you read it. And I was, uh, you know, this introduction is like, it almost leaves you breathless. And as I was reading it just this morning, I thought, goodness, it just, there's no kind of place to stop and take a breath, right? You're just reading through this text and the sentences just keep going and it keeps getting grander and grander. It moves from one idea to the next and keeps flowing. And it just seems like there's no good stopping point, right? I think what Paul is doing here is is setting what I would call a hook. He's he's drawing our attention in. And you kind of can get this sense when you when you read literature, you know, some famous lines that are just that just kind of captivate you and want to draw you in and hear the rest of the story, hear what's coming. I think that's what Paul's doing here. He's presenting something that makes you want to to, to hear the rest of what he has to say. You know, you know, literary things like this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. You think, well, I would like to hear more about that. Call me Ishmael. Famous introductory lines. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> All these lines that, that make you want to hear a little bit more, right? Some, some classic lines in literary history, they make you want to keep reading or make you want to keep listening. And I think this is what Paul is doing. You know, right now, um, I, it makes me think of contemporary examples when you when I watch videos on YouTube and uh, the little indication will come up that here comes an ad, right? Ads are coming in three, two, one, and then the ad comes up. But then after a few seconds, you get the chance to skip the ad. You know, after watching for five seconds, there's this little button, and maybe you know this, maybe there's this little button that says you want to skip this ad. It's incredible to me because what that's m meant is that when they make these advertisements, they have to make them interesting enough for you not to want to skip them. And how incredible is that? That you might be watching this ad and think, I'm actually really interested in this. I won't skip you. I'll watch ads on purpose, even though I don't have to. Paul is setting a hook. He's making it interesting. So you're thinking, I would like to hear more. He's really laying it all out there right here at the beginning. And with that in mind, I'll just offer this one final thought, which is how do you read this author? You might or might not be uh, familiar with, with Paul's writing style, but I oftentimes think of him as just, he, he gets excited about certain topics. He gets excited about the gospel. And it's almost almost reliable that you can be reading something that this fellow Paul wrote, and as he starts talking about salvation, as he starts talking about redemption, he just it's almost like he can't contain himself. He just keeps going and keeps going and kind of gushing forth onto the page. And you're trying to, we are trying to read, you know, but it's just, it's just going so fast and so many words. It can be overwhelming. Just, just frankly, it's okay to say that about scripture. It, it can be overwhelming. It can be hard to follow because he gets just so excited. And he just starts using all these words and it goes on and on. And as we're reading this, you think there's so much there. It's easy to lose the thread of what he's trying to say. 
So as we're getting into this book of Ephesians, I just want to offer uh, maybe some advice, some encouragement about how we can read Paul's writing. Paul, who, who, who might be the master of the run-on sentence, how can we read his writing? My encouragement to you is just take little bites. Take little pieces. Don't try to read a whole page because what will happen, I can almost guarantee, is that you'll read this page and by the time you get to the bottom, you'll think, what did I just read? <laughs> Don't take big bites. Take, take little bites of this book. Maybe a paragraph. Maybe just a couple sentences. Read them carefully, slowly. Look for the actual point that he's trying to make within all these grand and, and lavished words. Read small pieces rather than the whole page. Read a paragraph rather than a page. Maybe a couple sentences rather than a paragraph. And just let yourself digest those few lines. Before you know it, you'll start to get as excited as Paul was when he was writing this. I'm looking forward to getting deeper into the first 14 verses of Ephesians chapter 1 with you. Until then, let's be preparing the soil of our hearts together. We'll see you this weekend.